church and uh, thank you all for coming and uh, yeah it's a, it's a privilege for me to come back uh, for a short visit and uh, glorify God together in the same place in the same church in the, in the same time um, and with the same truth and uh, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I can share and have fellowships again um, so the, the message I'm going to preach today um, is from the second Corinthians chapter 5. Um, I will talk about from verse 1, or I, I will read first of all like the first 1 to 11, but I will have a focus on the first 8 verses. So, um, so let me read the, the scripture. So this is... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be close with our habitations, which is from heaven. If indeed, Having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be clothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home, in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, we are pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we, we persuade uh, men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust a well known in your conscience. And actually I want to read another uh, passage of scripture which is from Philippians chapter 1 from verse 19 to 26. And I think this is um, related to, to the passage here so I also want to read it but my focus will be on the second Corinthians chapter 5. So uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 19 to 26. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectations and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be manifested in my body whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Therefore I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you, all for your progress and joy of faith, that you rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. So, um, I think the main idea here is as what uh, Paul is saying that our current status is temporary and our hope 
is in um, eternity, a building that was built by God's hand. And um, I want to uh, have a prayer first, and then I will, and then I will uh, start to give you like a, some historical background of the letter, and then do a little bit more verse by verse stuff. Father, I, I thank you once again for this uh, fellowship fellowship year, and also that um, we can come together to to honor you, uh, to keep, uh, to lift your heart. And Father, I, I want to pray that um, that you can uh, let me be an empty vessel uh, to speak your words. Uh, I want to pray that um, let not a uh, man's idea or man's word to be spoken here, but rather your word to be spoken here. Father, I want to pray that um, you can give us the Holy Spirit to help us to understand your word, to prepare us and for our heart in the following uh, hours or times. Um, Father, that um, although I have prepared in the, in the past week about that, but I'm sure that I only know in part because uh, uh, we are still in this world and we, we, we haven't seen you face to face. But Father, I, I, I thank for that. When we see you face to face, then we know you as who you are. And uh, Father, once again, please help us to understand your words. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, I think this, this portion of scripture um, is really speak to me in my current season of life. Um, because it talk about the tents and talk about the house and um, I remember this uh, portion of scripture come to my mind when I saw my apartment in Norway <laughs> I don't know why this uh, this scripture just come to me come to my mind and, and uh, yeah I often when I have time I, I start thinking about uh, this scripture um, yes I, I, I feel sad of leaving <laughs> um, because I, I, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time here and I feel like um, I progress in my faith massively in this church um, and, uh, and also I live in a, a beautiful apartment from my point of view it's one of the best apartments I've <laughs> ever lived in in this world, in this world. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> later on we will talk, talk about uh, our future Habitation or our future uh, apartment, so to say. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think when I, I still remember when I saw the apartment, I still feel a bit sad, or I feel sad. Um, because I, I, it's just so much memory that come into my mind that I, I have our Bible study there, and you know, we have a lot of fellowship there. Um, so as I said, so during this time, this uh, scripture that comes to me, so uh, today I will try to share about this. But of course, this uh, when I prepare this, uh, I still feel a lot of uh, fear and trembling because I'm speaking to the church, I'm speaking to uh, the bride of Christ. And actually, when uh, last week, when Remus even sent me a message, after uh, it talks about this uh, well-known minister, who fall into uh, serious sins and lost his ministry, it may be even more fear and trembling. It may be remember that no matter how further I am in my faith, I still have this sin residue. I'm still living in a sinful world that I can still fall into temptations. And uh, I once heard someone say that they don't, they, their church doesn't preach about sin anymore because it's so fundamental. But um, I think it's very basic things. It's the most important things that we should always remember. We still have this sinful nature. We need to pray to God every day that He can keep us pure. He can help us in our sanctifications. Okay, so now let me give uh, a bit of the historical context or the historical background of the. 2nd Corinthians, uh, or maybe Corinth at the beginning. Um, so Corinth was, so I asked ChatGPT to help me. <laughs> so, and, and some commentary, actually. So,
So, um, so Corin is a, is a prosper and strategic city in the ancient Greece, um, which is located in an important trade route, and it was known for its wealth and diversity and moral challenges, which contribute to some of the issues that Paul is addressing in both uh, Corinthian letters. And uh, actually, this church was established by Paul. If uh, you can go back to the Act 18, he talks about that. And the first letter to the, Corin to the Corinthian Christians, um, um, Paul is writing to um, response to uh, several serious problems, uh, which includes the sexual immorality and some disputes about the spiritual gift um, and so on. And actually, after um, sending the first letter um, of Corinthians, um, Paul visited Corinth again. Um, but this, this, this visit, which is known as the, the painful visit, um, which is marked by the conflict with the church. Um, because some of the church members are challenging Paul's apostolic uh, leadership. And in the, in the second Corinthians, there are a few themes that Paul is addressing. I think the first one is Paul defending his apostolic authority. And he also teach the, the church about uh, forgiveness and reconciliations. And I like what the uh, uh, NIV study Bible says. So it, it summarizes all this thing with a uh, simple thing. That he said that in all these things, um, God uh, will comfort us in all our troubles. And also, we will offer this comfort to each other. So that's uh, uh, an overall theme in this letter. So, this is the background. And in the following, I would like to dive into um, this portion of scripture, uh, more in a verse-to-verse -verse, uh, fashion. So, um, yes, so let's do it. So I will take care of the time because I, I kind of feel that I might need to take two hours. So, <laughs> so, I, so I, I need to be uh, a bit flexible here. So, yes, so the first verse, it says that, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hand, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So first of all, is that um, if you your Bible maybe has like a footnote here, it says if our earthly house or this tent, it actually means our physical body. So once I even saw a translation, it basically translates it to our earthly body. So I think uh, Paul here is using. Uh, uh, you use this things as a picture for our um, earthly body because when I say about the tent, right? So it, it is something that is temperate, right? It's just for a temporary purpose. Right? If I go for a hike, I would just set up a, a tent maybe for a night, right? So I'm not going to stay there forever. Right? Um, but when you say about a building or a house, this is going to be a permanent place to dwell in to. To, to uh, it is like a resident place, and yes, um, yeah. So these temporary things, I think, we can also extend it to means our current things that we, our material things that we own in this earth, because they all have this characteristic as it is temporary. Right? For example, our our money, right, or our house, which is temporary. Um, and um, there's many things that are temporary, or maybe happiness. This is just a temporary view. Um, and what I find interesting, if you think about this, um, our bodies are temporary, but there are many scientists, or there are many um, yeah, medical scientists, they are trying to develop new techniques to extend our life and so on. But um, as we all know, is that this can only extend for a short period of time. You cannot 
it extends so that you can live forever. So, um, but I find it uh, kind of interesting that the, the atheists, they, they are trying to preserve life, they are afraid of that, and um, they are afraid of losing the current conflict. But as a Christian, I think we should have our view focus on the heavens. That we, in the future, we will have a body that is imperishable. Okay? Um, and it's better than the body that we have in now. Um, and we all will die, actually. Um, no matter how good our science will develop, we will die from day. Um, the reason is very simple, right? So you don't need to apply for a research grant to study it. <laughs> right? Because we all sin. And the Bible says that the price of sin is that. It means eternal separation from God. What does it mean by that? Right? First of all, I mean that is a separation. When I die, I separated from this world. So when I sinned, I, I will die. So that's uh, because of this simple nature. So what, what I, once I heard a friend say that, um, that there are researchers that study that, let's say today we, 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 we can cure cancer. Let's say we can cure cancer. So actually, we can only extend human's life for one or two years, so as you can see. Um, you can see how fragile our human life are and um, how temporary it is. So, as Christians, we should not fear that. Just as what we have read earlier in the, in the Philippians um, chapter 1, where it says that when, when, when Paul says that, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Right? Like, you can think of this person, he said, like he would desire to die, basically. And let me let me make sure that he's not teaching about uh, suicide. Okay, <laughs> that's that's an uh, important remark to make it here first. Uh, I think later on we will we probably will talk about something along the line. Okay, um, so yes. Um, so I, I want to extend even further a little bit that this temporary things it could also be our fellowship. Okay, so let me finish my uh, let me finish my sentence in full first. So our fellowship is temperate, but it's also permanent. Okay? So why it is temperate? Because people might leave our fellowship, and this is uh, this is true. Uh, this is, can happen for various reasons. Um, but our fellowship is also permanent. Because I'm sure that um, in heaven we still have our memory. Like, this can be sure. I mean, you can read the Bible, for example, in Revelations, um, it, it talks about these uh, Christians who was be who, who were killed because of their faith, who are martyred. Um, they cry to God that um, they ask God how long His judgment. Will be upon, uh, will will revenge their their blood and how long they wait until God will judge them. So that shows that they have their memory, and and therefore I think the, our fellowship with other believers and our relationship with them um, they will last forever. So so I think this is uh, this is a good reminder for us. So how to use our time wisely? Okay. Like don't use it in the things that would be that would be perished away, but rather to build up our relationship, our fellowships, and so on. I'm sure that we will see each other in heaven. Um, yes, and in this verse, let, let me go back to the verse that um, it says that um, that our our earthly house or this tent. Uh, is going to be destroyed. Right? So God, basically God will destroy this temperate tent. He will destroy this body. At the beginning, if you look at this verse, it feels like uh, uh, rather negative. It feels like God is destroying our body, destroying our home. But I think it is rather in the contrary. Because 
what God is destroying is our last residue of sin. When this last residue is destroyed and is conquered, then we will have our glorified body. Right? So this is actually an, an upgrade. Right? Before you, you upgrade sin, you need to destroy the old one. Um, and actually for us, we have, as, as a Christian, we have a completely different view on that. So we will not be about it. Well, I guess I will still afraid of the pain, but we are not fear of it because the reality is that we will be transformed to a better body. Um, in a second, I will do like a small topical study about our heavenly body, how what the Bible says about it. But let, let's wait for a second, for, for a few minutes. And another contrary to the tent is a building. Right? So I think here is a picture of our residency or is a, a resident. This will be something permanent. And, and Paul is using this as an image to talk about our future body, which is like a building and it's permanent. And as the text say that it would be built, uh, it is a building from God. God is behind all of this. Right? So we can have the assurance of it. And also, where is this uh, building? So this building, it will be in heaven. As many of you are homeowner, <laughs> we can think of this, uh, you know, this golden rules in real estate, which is location, location, location. <laughs> so this building, it will be in the best location. Um, this, uh, this is a stark contrast here, I think, because our earthly body is subject to decay, is subject to sins, right? no, matter, no matter how good a preacher you are, you, you still have this sinful nature here. Right? You, 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 can't, you can't get rid of it by studying the scripture. It, it's there. You only, the, the only things we can hope for is God one day will destroy this body and give us a new body. And on the other hand, our heavenly body is imperishable. You cannot be destroyed. It cannot be destroyed. And God builds it. In John um, 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 2, that Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So, when you think about this, this is such a glorious message. That Jesus, he, does, he did not only die for our sins, but because he died, he can also prepare a new home for us, a new residence for us in heaven. And, and also that's talk, that also um, gives us um, uh, an understanding of what salvation is. Um, here is what uh, David Gusick uh, wrote. So he wrote that salvation is not just for the soul or spirit, but also for the body. Um, I think in the, in the Greek uh, culturally, they have the understanding that the, the spirit is more superior than the body. So they think, they think maybe in our resurrection is only a bodiless spirit. But I think this verse is saying that our resurrection is not only have the spirit, but we also have the body. It's a spiritual body that we have. And, and also the, the glorious things about the resurrection is that um, God's own, own uh, also save and also transform our bodies. We will have a different body. It will be different to this one. Um, and behind this is God. Like God is destroying the old body and he's built up the new body. And God is sovereign. When God do something, it will happen. But at the beginning, when God said, let there be light, and there's light, right? you, can, you can look around the nature and see how powerful God is. You can experience his assurance of his new resurrections. Since we're already touching on this uh, new body or our heavenly body, 
I want to like uh, diverse uh, a little bit uh, to talk about to do like a, a more of a topical study on our heaven. So so we are still so we are still in verse one. So I, I will try to keep the time. So. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes. So um, so what will happen when we die? Actually, when we die, if Jesus does not come back, so I will be disembodied. So I don't have a body. I will just have a spirit that's around. But I will have a new body when Christ comes for the second time. Right? And then our body will be resurrected. We will get a new body as a Christian. Um, so how do our heavenly body look like? So actually, uh, we don't know it exactly. Right? So, but the only things we know is that this new body will be like Christ. So let me read uh, the first John, uh, chapter 2, verse 2. It says that, um, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, so in the in the in, in the present time, we don't really know how exactly our heavenly body will look like. There are some um, there are some characteristic of this body, which which later on I will. Uh, read another Bible passage that will talk about it. But one thing is, is sure that um, in the future, we will be like Jesus. We will be like Jesus. But it is important here to, to look at the word that it says that we shall be like him, like similar to him. Maybe not exactly like him. So one thing is, uh, well, well, one thing is easy to say, we, we will not be equal. Is that um, for our? I mean, Jesus is a male, so for our female sister, they, they will not be transformed to a male body. So, so in this sense, that we are like him, but not exactly like him. But there's also, um, but from here we can have some. Um, we, we can see some property of this body is that. Um, when after Jesus' resurrection, when he appeared to Thomas, for example, he asked Thomas to put his uh, finger into his side. So this, first of all, is, it shows that um, this would be means that this body is a physical body. And also, it is a functional body. Despite that he has the, the, the mark on, on the side. For, for this body, if there's a mark on the size, it will not be function anymore. But for this resurrected body, um, it will be a function. It, it will be a body that functions. Right? Even if there's some damage or, or, or things like this. And yes, so um, that's just one thing. And also Jesus ate with his disciples, right? So that would be clear that this is going to be a physical body. And the function. And we can also uh, compare about like the earthly bodies and the the heavenly body. Right? So in in the in the first Corinthians, in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, in first Corinthians chapter 15, uh, from verse 35 to 46, where it makes a comparison of the earthly body and the heavenly body. Um, first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 35 but someone will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come um, foolish one what you sow is not made alive unless it die and what you sow you do not sow that body that shall be but mere gate, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as He pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh, of man's, 
another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial body, bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So from, from verse 35 to 41, he basically saying there are different kinds of bodies, according to different uh, seed. And now it comes to the verse 42, it makes a, a comparison of the, of the body now and the body in the future. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruptions. It is raised in incorruptions. It is sown in dishonor. And it is raised up in glory. It is sold in weakness. It is raised up in power. It is sold a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterwards the spiritual. So I think here um, Paul makes a few very interesting points to compare the, the now body and the future body. Um, for example, our current body is subject to corruption. We can be sick, we can be ill, and, and so on. Um, well, that's why I need to visit my dentist um, <laughs> from, from time to time. Um, yeah, and in the future body, in the future glorified body, it, it would not have any corruptions. Okay, and the body now is dishonor, and the future body is glorified. So the current body we still have this simple nature there. Um, we, which we get it from Adam. We, we get this uh, earthly body from Adam. But our future body, we receive it from the last Adam, which is Jesus. Um, and the future body is also spiritual. Right? It has power. It's not like the current one. It has weakness. But the future one has and I think this is, uh, this is an interesting thing to look at because, um, of course, like still, you still don't know how the future body will look like, but you get a feeling about what kind of body we are going to get. Right? That makes you, that makes it attractive, that makes heaven attractive. And uh, I saw a, a commentary from uh, Spurgeon who, who quoted uh, John Bunyan. Like John Bunyan saying that um, if you are uh, interested in how the heaven body look like, you should uh, live a godly life and see it when you when you when you die in God. <laughs> so I think this is a, this is a good reminder for us. But the future body will be good. Will, will be I don't know how I can imagine. So if, if you make this uh, comparison. Um, okay, so this is about verse 1, and then let's move on to verse 2. Um, it says that, for this we brought, earnestly desiring to be close with our habitation, which is from heaven. So, um, in a context here, like for in this, it means that uh, Paul knows that the limitations of our current body, and he's desiring for the future, glorified body. And in this, he's grown. Right? So he, um, he desired much more to be in heaven with Christ than stay in the body. Right? But, but, he, he, but he, his reality was he's staying in the body. Right? So, and in this body, we, we have our weaknesses, 
And for Paul, he was also subject to persecutions at the, at the time. And, um, and we can see, and, and, and yeah, so there is this tension that he, he wanted to be with Christ, but now he's living in a body, right? So as I read for uh, Philippians chapter 1, uh, verse 21 to 23. Um, so actually, the, the Philippians, Paul is written in the prison. It was after the, the Corinthian letter. So um, for Philippians, it's written roughly around 60 to 62 AD. And for Corinthian, it is written in the 55 to 57 AD. So. And also for, for Philippians, He's, he's written this, uh, well, no, he wrote this letter in prison. So he know what does it mean by his suffering in this body and the weakness of this body. He knows it. He had a personal uh, experience of it. That's why he wrote there in, in Philippians that for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Uh, yet what I shall choose, I, um, I cannot tell. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be requires, which is far better. Right? So, so Paul knows that when he died, he will be immediately requires. Right? But he, he now is still living in the flesh. That means he needs to work out his salvation with fear and trembling. He needs to serve Christ. He needs to... Um, yeah, he needs to live out his Christian life in the body. He needs to press on, despite his weaknesses, despite there are, there are, it is subject to dishonor, subject to corruptions, illness, and so on. But he needs to press on. So I think he, um, I think this to us as Christian, this is also a good message that we need to have this balance that we know that in the future it would be much better than now. But now we are living our life. We, we need to press on. We need to live out our life and be a light in this world. Maybe to, and also to spread the gospel. Like later on, we will talk about that in the, in the, in the latter part of the, of the portion. He, he also discussed that. And, um, and here Paul also say uh, to be close with our habitations, which is from heaven. So here, habitation, I think he's once again making a, a contrast here, is that uh, habitation, it means a place to dwell, a place to settle down, it's a, resi a place to rest, uh, it's a residence, right? Um, in, in this context, um, because this habitation is from heaven, right? This, uh, this dwelling place is from heaven, and we will be close with this. Um, and yes, so this means that um, um, we we will have a, we will be we will be close. We will have a new body. Like this is the same. Um, and and also here we, we we can see that our our permanent residency is not in this world. It's in heaven. Right? Our our residency is not uh, in Norway, or even if you have, even though you have a permanent residence. <laughs> I mean, to to have a longer perspective, that our permanent residency is in heaven, and this nobody can take away from us because it's God who gives it, and His power will preserve it, and that's also help us to set our focus where we should focus on. Either we should focus on the earthly things or we should focus on the heavenly things. And uh, I think a, a, a good keyword to, to capture this is pilgrims. We are pilgrim in this world. Um, like pilgrim means a, a person who is on a long journey. Like usually it is a, a spiritual journey with a particular purpose or a particular destination. And our destination is in heaven. We are just traveling around in this world. We just go passing through. Um, and God, 
is our habitation uh, of his and, and his habitation of his people. Um, and who will find rest and safety in him. Um, yeah, so um, so what, what I mean is that like God's people want to inhabit it in God. And also at the same time, God wants to be our refuge. He also wants to be a habitation for us. Um, we can see this from Matthew chapter 11, from verse 28 to 30, where Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily, uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So God wants us to be, uh, so God wants to be our um, dwelling place. And now let's uh, move on to verse three and four. And here I want to read from a, a slightly, well, I want to read from different translations that translate the verse slightly different. I think, at least for me, it is uh, easier to understand. I take this from the NIV translation for verse three and four. It says that because when we are close, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened. Because we do not wish to be unclosed, but to be close instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Um, in verse 3, it implies that in eternity, we will have bodies and spirits, but not, not a bodiless spirit. And we are groaning and burdened because um, we do not want to be naked. Because this, this body, this temporary tent, will be destroyed. Maybe people will think that then we will be unclosed, we will be naked. But this is not Paul is saying here. This will not be crazy, will not be the case because we will be further close with uh, with with something from the heaven. And here Paul used the word swallow. This is interesting because uh, it says that mortal may be swallowed up by life. Like death will be swallowed up by life. So when someone says swallowed. Right, let's say I swallow a glass of water. Right? That means the, the water that I, it was swallowed, it will not exist anymore in the glass. So that means um, the death will be uh, completely removed immediately. Mm -hmm. When we die, the death will be removed immediately. <laughs> so I think this is, uh, this is very interesting. Right? So Paul mm -hmm. used this picture to to show us the real truth. It will be immediate. It, it will not be a process. Right? When we die, we get life. Mm -hmm. It will be swallowed by the hand. And uh, yes. And now verse 5. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Um, here it talks about the assurance of all the things that he has discussed. Right? The assurance of our resurrection and the assurance of our resurrected body. Because all of this, um, like he said that he who has prepared us for this very thing is God. Right? It's God who prepared us. And also here he used the, the tense. It's a perfect tense. Has prepared us. Mm -hmm. That means that this work has been done. So this is the the things here. And and also I think he he add on one thing that he says that an evidence for that is the Holy Spirit. Right? Like God has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. And uh, I checked that uh, the word guarantee in Greek 
it has the meaning of a down payment. Right? So it, it, it seems, let's once again talk about uh, our real estate. So when you, <laughs> when, when you buy a house, you will pay, you, you will pay a down payment. Right? It's a guarantee. It's basically showing that I'm going to pay it in full. Right? So now I'm giving you a down payment. But this is going to be a guarantee. We have evidence um, that uh, this well, we have uh, we have evidence, we have guarantees about about this about this future qualifications. And uh, I think God is also preparing us now to to be to, to fit our eternal destinations. For example, if you think about um, well, if you think about our current uh, fellowships, right? So we love one another. And God is, is, is helping us to learn how to love one another. And this is also because in heaven, the love will not cease. It will not, it, it will not be ceased. Like love. We, still, we still will have love. In we still love one another. And because God is love. And uh, for these preparations, so sometimes it could be hardship. Okay? It's not just good things happening in this earth. Sometimes we also have our hardship. Um, I think our hardship can also train us to be more patient, to be uh, perseverant, okay? um, and also to endure. Right? So you. Um, you, you, you train yourself by going through hardships, and it, it's like going to achieve, right? So you, you, you want to increase the difficulty of doing certain exercises, right? so, you know. Um, and I think, well, and, and I think our godly character, they will be continued in heaven. So, um, but the ungodly one, they will be burned up. And, and also, I think um, when I think about when I think about our um, current blessing from the Lord, I think this is also an indicator for the future goal. So if we are enjoying each other so much in our TIRC fellowships, right? And think about in heaven, this will be better, right? If if we are enjoying last week's lockdown trips. <laughs> I actually feel like it was too short. So. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if, if on earth, our, <laughs> we will also have our choice in heaven. I'm sure. um, yes, so let, let's continue to verse 6. Um, it says that, so we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, I think the key words here, well, there's two key phrases. Um, the first one is confidence. It's because of the context that we, we, we now can be confident. Right? Because like, God is the author of all of this. Right? And, uh, and uh, we, we can see um, His promise. And, um, we can also experience His power. So if, if God is the author of all this, we can be assured that it will happen. And also He has given the down payments, as we, 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 we discussed. And, uh, and most important, I think, is also uh, this eternal hope is purchased by the blood of Jesus. Like God's only begotten Son. So, um, because of that, we can have even more confidence. Mm -hmm. And and the second thing here in, in this uh, in this part of the scripture is that we should walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. if, if we walk by sight, I can see um, the decay, the decay of my body, right? And also I can see I need to give a, a, a happy uh, fellowship on the earth. There are things that's, that's temperate, that can be any. That's something that I can see, right? But, um, but by faith, 
Now this is a bit, we, we have a different vision, I think, because with this, with, with this uh, internal hole in mind, that um, we have, with, with our internal hold in heaven in mind, we can see things differently. Although our fellowship is tempered in, on the earth, but it will be continued in heaven, and it will never end. And, uh, and uh, by faith also, we can see our future glorified body. And as I read earlier, all this character, all, all this property of this body, right, it is incorruptible. It would be raised up in honor. It would be in power. It would be raised up in power. And with this in mind, we can have hope. We can have hope every day, no matter what happens. And uh, since we are talking about faith, I need to read about like a, a, a favorite or my, my favorite uh, quote on that, which is in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, where where he has these faith messages. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says that now faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. Or I read it from a different translation. It says that now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is faith. And I think people challenge that uh, we, we have faith without any uh, evidence. But that's not true. That's just not true. I think the Christian faith is based on evidence. A few weeks ago, I was, uh, I, I was sharing my testimony in, in the German church. Oh, in, in German, so, so. <laughs> so I, I'm happy that I, I, I'm back for, for, for a short break. Um, that I can use English. So, and I think um, at the point that I, I, was, uh, I was a young believer, there's one thing that we make me to be sure that Christianity is true, is the evidence on Jesus' resurrection. This cannot be, this cannot be false. I mean, there are so many compelling evidence that showing a man that has been raised from death, like throughout the history, there's no, there's basically no historical events has such a evidence that showing such things happens. Right? So when, when someone say that Christianity is a, is a, is a faith without proof, uh, that's not true. Well, without evidence, that's not true. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's without proof, right? I mean, what does it mean by proof and what does it mean by evidence? Right? Proof is showing you these things can only happen like this without exception. Evident is like it's very possible that something is true. Do I have proof about Christianity? No, because God is much greater than I am. I, I can't prove it. I, I'm much smaller. Even if God revealed everything to me, I will not even have space to store it. Right? But I have evidence that tells me that Christianity is true, based on one single fact that Christ has indeed risen from that. And this evidence is so powerful too, that I, I have no choice but to believe in Christ. And yes, that's about it. Okay, so, so we can continue. Yes. Um, once again, in, in, in verse 8, um, it says that we are confident Yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Um, I think uh, an application of this verse is that we should desire heaven much more than here in the earth. Um, I think sometimes we, at least for me, I'm speaking of myself, that I, I sort of enjoy the world more than heaven sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Right, so you think of like you you know you you know you have good friends, you have good fellowships, and and it feels like you you want to stay here forever instead of going to heaven with the Lord, right? Or uh, yeah, or there's certain things you want to do in life. You you want to do it before you die, right? So, but 
actually, just as what Paul said, if, if I die right now, praise the Lord. That's great. I, I immediately get an upgrade. Um, so, do not be comfortable here. <laughs> so, if you don't feel comfortable, uh, maybe this is a healthy start. So, um, <laughs> but sometimes I feel like you can be too comfortable. Right? So maybe you have a, a nice job, right? you, you probably have a nice apartment with a nice view. <laughs> with a nice view. <laughs> and, uh, and so on. Right? But all these things, the reality of all these things is that they're all temporary. They can end. And what is important is that what are the things that we can have in eternity? I think a, a, a good thing that we can, we should always think about is that, but, but of course, although things uh, here are temperate, but they have a consequences in eternity, which is the next passage, the next portion of the scripture we talk about, right? Because, because you, you, you can, I mean, at this point, maybe someone will ask, right? So if, if heaven is so much better than the earth, why not we just stop it here, now? I mean, what's the point of living here, right, of staying here? But the answer is in the next uh, portion. It's as what I earlier said, that temporary things has eternal consequences. Um, I want to read uh, uh, the, 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 the remaining portions of the scripture, which is the second Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 9 to 11. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present, pre present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And we are all known to God, and I also trust are uh, well known in your conscience. So the goal, uh, the, the, the goal in, in the body is that we should please the Lord, we should honor Christ. And one of the reasons is that because we will stand before God for our judgment. And I think here, although Paul is uh, addressing to Christians, I think this judgment, uh, it means for both non-believer and believer. So, so let me explain. So for non-believer, um, as I said earlier, and repeating, saying that we are sinner, and if you don't, well, and Christ has paid for our sins, and if we don't accept this, we need to stand before God on our own. And according to the Bible, the consequence is clear. That means we will have damnation without Christ. Um, and this is because the terror of God. Like God cannot tolerate anything unholy. And, and this, for, for us as Christians, it actually makes us more desirable to share the gospel with them, with the non believer because we see the eternal consequence of it. We, we, we don't want them to be condemned. We want them to be saved. And I think God also said that He has no joy in that. And that's for non believer And I think that for believer, we will also uh, be judged. We should also, uh, but it's a different kind of judgment. So I, I will explain in a second. Um, and our judgment is on how we live our Christian life. Right? How we use our gift. Are we doing it in honor of God? Are we, are we put our trust in God and using our gift? So first of all, as Christian, we will be judged. Let's uh, read Romans chapter 14, verse 10 to 12. And, and Paul is writing to the Christians in Romans. They can be Jews, they can be Gentiles. But why do you judge your brother? 
or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. So we will stand before the judgment seat. And how we are going to be judged. So this I want to read to you um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, so we, we are coming to an end. So this is more of the application sections. Um, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 to 14. Um, it says that for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ. So Christ laid down the foundation, which is our salvation. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hair, stone, each one's work will become clear. For the day, like the judgment day, will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endure, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer a loss, but he himself will be saved. Yes, so as though fire. So we will uh, the quality of our work will be tested by fire. If we endure the test, we will have a reward. And, and I, I heard of someone say that maybe they, they don't want this reward because they just want to serve Christ. Even if there's no reward, they will still do it. Um, but we will have a reward if, if your work has endured. I don't know how this reward is, but you will see. Right? You will see. <laughs> we talk about the future. Um, and it will happen. This is important. It will happen. Um, and if it also says that if, if your work is burned, it, it, it's burned, it's burned up, right? So you suffer a loss, right? Maybe you lost your time on the earth, right? So maybe, for example, if I if I doing a sermon only for myself, self pleasing or, or, or self uh, lifting, then then there's no reward. Right? So and and I waste my time. Of course, you will not lose your salvation, you are still safe, but you waste your time, or you waste your, yeah, I don't know what it is, but you waste it. That's sad, right? So, because you have an opportunity to serve the world better, but, but you waste it. And, uh, let's see, uh, so, so the, the, the application is that, um, so we should choose wisely. So, uh, always think of like what will uh, benefits happen better, okay? And <clears throat> and in the end, I want to show a picture, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, if you <coughs> if you can, uh, actually this is a picture when we were in Cambridge, right? So our group picture actually. So uh, we have some times. So yes. So as you see, like everyone's are smiling. So. <laughs> I think the first time when I saw this picture, the phrase is that uh, how happy heaven will be. And in heaven, we will be very happy. We will have a, a joy to the maximum level. Right? So, um, and we are very looking forward to it. Um, so I, yes, so this is the picture. So, <laughs> are you okay? Okay. Yes. So, um, I want to close in, uh, in prayer, and, uh, and then I will hand over to Pastor Lord. Father, we just want to thank you for this, uh, for this glorious message. Uh, it's talk about our future hope. It talk about eternity. But most important, Father, is that um, we don't deserve eternity. It's only by your grace, um, by your sacrifice, um, by your love that um, 
we can have this uh, eternity, we can have hope, an actual hope. Um, but we know that um, things on this earth are only temporary, only for a short time. But Father, um, in this message, you also tell us that although it is temporary, it has, uh, it has a perspective in, in eternity, it has consequences in eternity. And also how we choose to live today, it has the consequences in the future. Father, I want to pray that um, um, that we can we can be bold about sharing the gospel to non-believers, um, because we know that um, without you, mm, we all need to suffer the nations, and uh, and of course we don't want them to to suffer that. And Father, we also say in your word that we have no choice in condemning them. And Father, I also want to pray for brothers and sisters, pray for Christians, that they can live their life, that will give glory to you, that will, um, they, they live their life and their Christian work will endure this, this, this fire in the, in the judgment day. Um, Father, I just want to thank you once again for this fellowship and uh, thank you for the day. And uh, yeah, I pray in Jesus' name.